When's the last time you've been on stage or on a virtual show, whatever it, whatever it is, and you're just like, yeah, this is not going. This is not going well. Uh, man, the last time I was on it, it was going terrible. Well, I mean, if I'm being honest, man, last night, man. <laughs> yeah. If I'm, yeah, last night, man. It was, uh, was, uh, it was not great. I've been on a nice streak. I've been on a nice streak, and that always happens when you're on a good streak. Uh, you know, once you hit a bad one, you're like, ah, that was rough. You know, it wasn't it wasn't murderous, like it wasn't like you know cry or like you know reflect for too long. But I had to talk myself down a little bit. You know, like when the show's bad enough, you gotta at least call your friend that is close enough to you that you can tell that to that you can actually have the conversation that you don't have to have them laugh at you for the first however long, you know? Right. You gotta right. have a friend like that where you're like, oh man, it was bad. They're like, what happened? And they actually really care. And then you guys are dying about it, but you can actually assess it and break it down. And then you feel better because you're like, all right, I workshopped it. I got it. I'm, I'm good. I'm over it. I'm good. You know? Right, like, right. Knows? So last night was, I was actually out of college and uh, I was doing a college and um, I literally just came off of my first unprompted, unlike like full eruption standing no back in uh key west i, I had done that uh last week uh well actually just a couple of days this past weekend mm -hmm. and so i left flew home monday got got in at two in the morning on monday drove to syracuse new york and did a school out there and uh that day uh i did the show and uh just it was it just didn't go great it just didn't go great it was uh it was kind of annoying. I was seeing the, the, like, it wasn't a bomb per se, but it was like, you know, when you're used to doing well, right. uh, if you don't, if you're not doing well, just things that you read on people's faces, that is enough for you to feel like you're bombing, you know? So like some people were talking a little too much, you know what I mean? I already addressed that, you know, some people were talking to each other very loudly, a different pocket of people. I addressed that. And then they kind of continued. And then the advisor is there and it's senior weekend and the advisor, you know, the guy, you know, that's running the room, the guy in charge of everybody, he's just like pacing, like can't wait to get out of there and go home type of thing. So he's on this side of the room. He's on that side of the room. I'm looking at him, he's pacing, he's pacing. It was kind of just like, oh man, like, man, sit down, man, and chill out so I could so I could focus on what I'm doing here. And, right. uh, but I can see the annoyance in his movements and it was bothering me, his mannerisms. I'm performing and his mannerisms in the back of the room are bothering me. His like, like these, this thing, you know what I mean? I'm like, ah, I'm like, stop. Just leave the room. You know, that's what I'm feeling. Yeah, exactly. Right. Like, I can see you, can you know? See you. Yeah. All of, his, all of his motions were bothering me. And it, uh, I just kind of, I just kept going. And, uh, but like, there's a time when you're still going when it's almost like, ugh. Like, I just I had that feeling of like, ah, oh, this is like, whatever. I was like annoyed a little bit. Right. And then, um. You know, and then you hit another laugh or something, but then it's like right back into it again. I see people look at me like, you know, they're looking at me and then I see them like, <laughs> like when I look at them, they go. <laughs> and then when I turn away, like as I'm turning away, they're like, <laughs> back in their phones like this. Right, right, and right. They, and whenever I come back, they're like, <laughs> you know, they're back looking at me smiling like, oh, you're not even listening. Ah, yeah. You know, and again, right. it's not everybody and it's not one person either. It was like, you know. Out of a hundred people in there, you know, twenty of them were disengaged, and it was a pain. You know, yeah. they're, they're breaking into small groups and talking, and at the same time, in their defense, so you always just, you always break it down to yourself after, like what happened. But in right. their defense, they had already been sitting there for an hour watching another comedian. Then they got another supposed to be another because the other comedian went a little long. He was supposed to go like thirty minutes or forty-five minutes, or whatever. He went an hour. Fine. Then I go up and I'm supposed to do like 45 minutes, 50 minutes, whatever. I go long. I go in the bad situation. I'm, I still go hour 20. Just so at one point there was a kid sitting up front and he's like, he's like moving like this. I'm like, what's wrong, man? What's wrong with your butt, or your legs or something? I was like, what's he was like, dude, I've been sitting too long. And I was like, ah, and I was just thinking like, he's just one saying it. Right. Yeah, right. they're feeling it. You know what I'm saying? The other ones are feeling it. 
And uh, whenever you're thinking about how long you've been sitting, you're not enjoying yourself, you know? Yeah, it's like a long car ride. You're like, get me out of here. You know, yeah. like, uh, no matter what song comes on the radio, it's not like, I, I'm I'm happy to be here. You want to go. You want to get out. Yeah, you've already made that decision that you're ready to go. But if you're playing tons of good music before you get to that decision, it's awesome. It's yeah. once you've made that decision, then the song doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. Because you've already uh, recognized the butt feeling. You've already recognized, like, I'm done. So even your favorite song, you're like, I don't want to hear that right now. I can't enjoy it like the way I want to. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, it's such a it's such like the universe of comedy and like the comedy gods, the the cosmic aspect of us is so funny because it's like it really is the most humbling, equalizing thing where you can have shows like that you have in Key West and do the you know, probably the same material for the most part. You know, you tweak a couple mm. things and it's just it's completely different reactions. You know, yeah. and you're like, what is going on here? It, like yeah. in no other line of work, do people get this varying of results on the same product? You know, it would be you would you would quit your job. You know, if you if you were if you worked in a restaurant and you made a burger one night and people were like flipping out, they're like, this is the best burger ever. <laughs> you know, and then the next day people are like, we can't even eat this. We don't want this. Right. You we know, don't want this anymore. And, yeah. I mean, and, and I'll be in, in all honesty, working in Key West, I'm doing like club type situation. Right. Going to the college, I'm doing a college set. But it's a, it's I know how to work a college. I've done many colleges. And so it w they haven't went like this. This was yeah. based on the elements, based on me, based on me keeping them there an hour and 20 minutes. They were done. I could have really been done at 45. It's sometimes... People think, I don't think other people don't realize this, but like sometimes, you know, if you're doing bad, we know a lot of people bail early, right? You could bail mm -hmm. early. You're like, oh, I'm supposed to do 30 minutes and I did 15. It was so bad, right? You know, right. I feel like that happens early on more than later. I feel like later, the longer you've been doing stand up, I feel like you're doing bad. Sometimes you kind of just get in it and you like, you're digging in and you're trying to change things. And you're trying to find that you're trying to find that high that you're used to, and you'll go way longer as opposed to running away from it. Right. Now you're still gonna feel shitty after, but you're gonna you 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 you're mining for it. You're still mining for it, but you're not as afraid to mine for it as opposed to early on. You're like, oh no, I gotta run, egg on my face, I gotta get yeah. out of here. You know, so right. I should have stopped at 45. I do an hour and 20. That's just dumb. That was dumb on my part. I was doing good enough at 45. I was doing well. I would have left it and be like, well, that felt short. It just felt like I didn't look at my time or nothing. I just, of course, the guy's mannerisms were pissed off in the back of the room. I'm going 30 over when he's ready to go home. He's been with these kids all day. He told me they had events all day. This dude's like, oh, my God, can this last comic get off so I can go home? I just want to hey. be away from the school now. And I'm like, so... So what, what? So so tell me something. I'm, I'm just up here digging, you yeah. know. So so yeah. There is something very gratifying, though, even when a show is not going well, about saying, "Well, if I have to be here, so do you." You know, of yeah. of I will keep you in this, and uh, <laughs> and, and well, let's go for a record. You know, let's see how long we can actually push this. You know, you're 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 gonna die on your own terms. That's what I love about comedy. That. You get to a point where it's like, if I'm going to bomb, I'll, I'm going to bring this whole place with me. Uh, <laughs> you know. What to, when a, you think, go ahead. No, I was going to say that's a certain level of comfort because you right. know, it, that you have to get to that point to be able to do that. Right. You have to get there. Otherwise, everything affects you on such a high level that emotionally you run. Yeah. Most people run early on. You know what I mean? You have to get there. I mean, if, even for some people later, if you know they just they can't handle it. but usually the more seasoned the comedian the longer they can like live in something and like learn a lesson from it after like you see as soon as i was done i was on the phone like i should have got off or like i already i know what i did wrong like i'm already assessing it i'm breaking it down yeah i'm not just like they hated me i didn't do none of my jokes landed you know what i mean i'm not talking right. about that you know they didn't do anything wrong besides sit there for way too long you yeah. know and 
and then be college kids that were ready to get out of the room and go fuck each other. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah, I'm like, exactly. So, so, uh, <laughs> done. <laughs> done. <laughs> uh, it's so it's such when you think about a college audience, it's like the worst mix of people where it's like people that have that they're they're distracted they're they're young enough to be distracted by their phones and they're old enough at the right age to where they are powered by sex they're only driven by sex yes. so it's like and they can't have a drink they can't drink there the, the only opportunity for them to drink is to leave yeah. you know so it's it's just trying to contain it's trying to contain like a, a real life hormone if you took a hormone and you put it into a, <laughs> in a seat it's like sit here and watch um you know, oh, you wait, talk. Wait, let me let me say this one other thing because that's a, such a good point. It's a real life hormone that you can't that you can't uh, say what you want to say to it, and not just talking about material wise. I'm saying when you're at the school and they're acting ridiculous, let's just say like disrespectful, ridiculous, whatever. You can't just be like, "Hey, motherfucker!" Like you can't. You don't come at them the same way. You know right. what I mean? Like, right. you're not coming at them with the same retorts, rebuttals. You're not doing the same crowd work that you would do somewhere else. You know, you're doing that a little more tender. Now, however you do that is how you do that. But you're trying to repeat business. You know, you got people, you know, you got sometimes a professor there, sometimes advisors there. So it's a way that you handle that. And it's like, because at the end of the day, they are, they are students. Right. At the end of the day, they're students. Some people are like, fuck that. I'll say whatever. It's like, well, then you won't do colleges very long. You know what I mean? Like, I yeah, like, exactly. I like right. when people think they can just do what they want to do. I go, oh, fuck that. They, they knew who they hired. No, they they knew they hired a professional. That's someone, you know, like, I, I love these. I love this. I'm just going on this little tangent real quick. I love when people say stuff like even about teachers in general. Like someone will be like, oh, if that kid punched me in the face, I fucked that kid up. It's like, you can't be a teacher. Like you wouldn't be allowed to be a teacher. You're not. You're not teacher caliber. The teacher yeah, you're supposed to get right. punched in the face and grab the kid and hold him. The teacher's yeah. not supposed to get punched in the face. Like, oh, that's what we're doing in here, and just start whooping ass. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like, yeah. That's why I feel when comedians sometimes think they're like bigger than what the situation they got brought into. If you get hired for a corporate and they say you have to be clean, go fucking be clean. Don't right. go in there and be like, nah, they know, they know what I do. They asked you to be clean. <laughs> right. If you can't do it, don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah, nah, exactly. Whatever. It's, it's a great point of like, you said it, they hired you to be a professional. And sometimes it is getting punched in the face and not punching back. <laughs> right. You know, right. there are some days that you had just go, there's a bag of money over there. And for me to get it, I have to get punched in the face, <laughs> you know, and I'm going to do it. I'm not going to punch them back. If I punch them back, I lose the bag of money. <laughs> right, 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 right. Because right. there's more bags behind that bag. If right. you punch him in the face, you only get that one bag. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 It, it, you you know, it's it. You're there to when you're doing crowd work with like college students, you have to almost be like, hey, we're, we want to be nice. Do you want to be nice to me? You know, could you can we do this together, please? Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh my god that is so true that is just just do it you just have to do it uh you talk a little bit about comfort there and you have to be comfortable with that feeling you have to be comfortable with just owning it you know when you're coming up do you remember the point where it sort of went from being i'm uncomfortable all of the time to now I'm starting to feel like this is my space. I can do things. I can I can play a little bit. I can really control this room. Do you did you did you feel like a switch or was it a certain moment you felt that? I tell you, man. Um, as I'm shitting on colleges, colleges is where I developed that. The reason is. Um, when you work in a school, and, and, I, and this is spilled over into the clubs, and it's spilled over into cruise ships, and it's spilled over into corporate shows, everything from colleges. Here's what happens. Colleges, the expectation, what a lot of us don't know until you do them for a while, the expectation, the bar is lower. They don't know. It's not like you're in the club where it's like bang, 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 bang. Because the stuff you think is going to be banging, they're not even laughing at that stuff. Sometimes they're laughing at the setup. You get to the punchline, they're just looking at you. You're like, okay, all right, 
Got it. Got it. It's different. It's just a different mode. They're not in that like but up but up. A lot of them, <clears throat> a lot of them have never even been to a club. They don't know. So this is some of their first introductions to live stand up. Now people be on the internet and whatever, but this is their first introduction. So or one of their first introductions to live stand up. So now get to answer your question. What started happening for me was I engaged with them and I started getting more and more comfortable engaging with them and finding funny in those moments as opposed to up there talking about my family and stuff. These are college kids. Unless you're famous, they don't care about your kid. They don't care about your uh, mow the lawn yesterday, the lawn mower. They don't give a shit about you, that regular. Like, they don't care. Unless you're big time and they care about your life on social media and they want to take pictures with you after like that. They don't care about that shit. So to me, I, I, uh, you know, I learned how to just relate to them without just talking about college stuff. Like when I was in college, you know, right. instead of just doing that the whole time, that's in my back pocket when I need it. I'm like, you know what I used to do, right? That's in there. But I had to figure out another way to fill this time. Like, what am I going to do? So I started engaging with them more and I started finding funny in their responses. And I started basically just doing crowd work, but really doing like, getting into it and like listening crowd work, like good crowd, like like actually responding, not like whatever they say, I'm gonna say yellow and green, you know what I mean? Like I'm really, uh -huh. like, I'm clearly listening and I'm getting into it. And it started to develop a level of comfort where like where I'm doing whole shows and I might tell two bits and I'm feeling the rest of the, the other 48 minutes or whatever, the other 40 minutes with me talking to them and like we're all laughing though it's not just like we're having a convo but we're talking and laughing and the whole thing changed my comfort started to change then i was like dang i would leave the show and be like i told one joke like right. i literally told one planned joke told a lot of jokes throughout the set but one planned joke all of a sudden and that's not my mo usually i'm pretty prepared mm -hmm. you know i'll go off the cuff in the clubs and whatever but not to the degree where it's like all right i'm free i'm i'm, I'm free forming right now you know but so what I started realizing was like, okay, I'm getting a little bit more comfortable. I just told one joke or two. I'd be talking to my friend after, and I'd be like, one of my boys, my boy Orlando, you know, everybody has, you should, I think the best way to grow is to have a comedy buddy. That's my comedy, but like my closest friend in comedy, that's, we always bounce everything off each other. So I'm talking to him and he's like, yo, he, I'm like, yo, I did two jokes. I'm like, I did one joke. He's like, yo, you're going up there the whole time doing one joke. I'm like, yeah. And the rest of the time I'm, I'm finding the jokes and the thing. It's so so here's the weird part about that. If I think about that going in, it's very taxing. I can't do it that way. Mm -hmm. I must be in it to do it. It's almost right. like when you're looking at, I, sometimes I don't enjoy looking at the clock when they're like, yo, there's a countdown clock back here for you to do your time. I'm like, fuck that clock. I don't look at that clock until way later. Because if I start watching that clock and you know, it's counting down, I'm like, damn, I got 40. 43 more minutes. I just, I just, I only did two minutes so far. I'm staring at the clock, the clock. But like when you forget about the clock, all of a sudden you're like, oh shit, I got 11 minutes left. You don't even realize it's like a, such a mind game. So yeah. going into that situation, I didn't realize when I'm going into those situations, as far as like, you know, I'm doing all this crowd work and all this other stuff. I don't like thinking about it like that. I always go in prepared. I'm still prepared. I got a you know, in my back pocket, you know, whatever. And my mind is full of jokes, hour plus worth of whatever. But once I know I have that security, then I go and start saying whatever. And if I'm ever in a jam, it's like, well, here's something that, that I know is good. Well, here's something I know is good, you know? And that method started developing comfort for me, if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. You know, it's it's so um, like Zen for lack of a better term, you know, of like, like being in the moment, being so present because that's really what audiences want. They want you to be with them. They want you, they don't want to think that you wrote this material for the last three years. You know, they don't want that. They want to think you're, you're coming up with this on the fly. And, you know, I think like looking at that clock, I, I agree. There's, it's so, uh stress inducing it's it's like if you're running on the treadmill or something and like you have the clock in front of you and you look down and you're like jesus i've only been running for two minutes how <laughs> have i only I'm, I'm going to die you know like it's it's right. the worst because you just but if you just give yourself to the moment like it really does fly by you know yeah. and just be present with them 
Uh, and, and that is just, you know, I think that's really the most comfortable you can be when you can just go, what's happening now is going to happen now. And that's it. You know? Yeah. 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 Being able to all of a sudden it starts to now when you're in the clubs, the way it translates is I never go into the club as free as I do into a school. But when I'm in a free sit, like after I've established like shit's, shit's going down, we're having fun. Now, the freedom is always underlying. It's flipped. So it's free. When I go into colleges, usually it's freedom and everything I need if I need materials here. When I go into a club, it's like I'm ready to go and the freedom is all here. So whenever I want to reach and break it, I can. And then I just go back to whatever. I'll stay there for a while. If the, if the well is wet, when it dries up, it's time to get back to work. You know what I mean? Right. So it's like right, I kind of right. just play with it. And then I just ebb and flow being, being with them. You know, and it's just fun. Yeah. it's more fun like that. So that kind of is, I would say, and so for a timeline of when that was a few years ago, I don't know, maybe five, six, five years ago, something like that, where it really started getting like that. Um, yeah. Yeah, I never was. I never was like, a, I never was like a, a nervous guy. I was I obviously was anxious. You know, you get that that anxious level. Um, but like I said something to myself, like the first when I for very first started stand up and I was like, I wrote it in my little book There's all these little notes I would write to myself, like in the front cover of my first comedy book. And one of them was one of the notes I wrote was like, one thing I wrote was like, be be honest, like if you know, tell the truth, if you tell the truth, then you, you can't be heckled. That's what I wrote to myself because I used to be like, well, if they're trying to heckle me. I was like, well, if I'm telling the truth. And I was like, what is someone going to say if I'm fucking telling the truth? They can't be like, that didn't happen. It's like, yes, it did. I can prove it. You know what I mean? It's like, so yeah, right. that was one of my things. And the other thing I wrote was, um, if, if uh, what was it? I, I wrote, if you, um, what are we talking about? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Because we're talking about being heckled. And if you, if you, oh, I wrote, um, as far as time goes, like, like, oh, no, no. As far as getting up on stage goes. So this is why I didn't get, I wasn't so fearful is because I was like, I have no option to leave. So I was like, there's no option to leave. So once I remove the option to leave from doing the show, like if I show up at a show and I remove the option of leaving, then what the fuck am I going to be nervous about? I have to do it. If I have to do it, then I'm only torturing myself to be like, oh no, I got to get on stage. I got to get on stage. What am I doing? Why would I be like that? So once I remove that, that fleeing option, the flight, fight or flight, once I removed the flight away and it was like, no, are you going to, cause I would ask myself, I'd be like, you're going to leave or you're going to stay. Cause for a while I would be doing stand up and I would get to a show and I would hope they'd cancel that shit. I'd hope they'd be like, Hey, it's not <laughs> enough. I'd be like, fuck yeah. Oh, I showed up and they canceled. I'd be so happy. <laughs> it would feel good inside. Like I felt like I, I went to fight him and he died. And I was like, ah, I won. You know, I didn't have to do shit. I just, I went and he fell over. You know, that's what it would yeah. feel like. And then, um, and then I started getting upset if the show got canceled. Like, nah, we'll do it, man. It'd be like three people. I'd be like, I fucking do it with three people, man. Let me do the show. I'll do the show. Then it got nice. like that where I really wanted to, like, I just always was was ready to go. And 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 that, a lot of that developed because, like I said, I just really faced the fact of like, if I take away the option of leaving, then it's stu it seems almost stupid for me to keep beating myself up about how it's going to feel to do it because I'm going to do it. So if right. I'm going to do it, just erase it. Stop. Stop. There's no that the scariest shit in the world is when you know you can leave because it's like, man, I could just get out of here. If you know you can do that, that shit's nerve wracking the whole time. You're like, I don't have to do it. I don't have to. Do it. If the person is killing in front of me, I'm getting the fuck out of here. I don't care. No, no, I'm not. Doing it. I don't want to do it. I don't, don't want to do it. Remove it. And then, you know, so that that's kind of how it was for me for for a while coming up and I got used to it. Yeah. When you talk about that first comedy notebook, let's go back to those days where, you know, everything is so intense. I feel like in the sense of your first open mic, your first good show, your first bad show. What do you think from those early, early years? Do you have any shows that because you have no guide and no, um, uh, you don't have a wealth of shows to pull from, yeah. Do you have any of them that stick out of like, yeah, that was a bad idea. That yeah. was a, what are, what are, what are some ones that really come to your mind? Yeah. Uh, I have a couple. So, um, 
one in particular was uh, just some stupid stuff I used to do is, is I think, uh, I'm going to make a generalization here. I think many comedians, I know myself and I've seen others from watching them, I feel like you're very insecure when you first start just in what you're doing because you don't know. It's not mm-hmm. like you're insecure as a person or whatever, but you don't know what the fuck you're doing, really. So every everything that was altered in a room was almost like against me. It was like, oh, you fucking with me. Like I felt I, I became defensive. I feel like many people are defensive when they start because you you're thinking like I got to control everything. So people would walk into the show and I'd be like, oh, thanks for showing up, dickhead. Like I'm immediately attacking these people. Like I'm attacking them like they like they like they hate me. I'm attacking them. And it's like I'm saying all this crazy stuff to them. But it wasn't they could have just been out there paying for tickets late. They could have showed I don't care what their reason was. It wasn't like they were coming in to disrupt the show. They could be coming in from the side, quietly coming in. I'm like, Welcome to the show, Dick. Way to show up. Wow, wow. You know, I'm because I'm thinking in my defensive brain back then, I'm thinking everybody's like, oh, you're just going to let them walk in the show like that? Just disrespect you? And I'm like, I'm like <laughs> and then eventually you get comfortable enough not to do that. But I used to do that. It used to bother me. As soon as someone had to go to the bathroom, oh, somebody's going to pee. Somebody's going to sit. Like, it's funny to do that shit sometimes in the moment when it works. But I'm saying I was, I was overdoing it. Like, right. I would do it. And I'd be in the middle of a bit and people are laughing. I'd stop. I'd be like, oh, somebody has like, just shut the fuck up and let the person, the person's trying to be respectful. They're quietly waiting for you to turn your head and then they're easing out. And I'm like, oh, don't think I didn't see you easing out. Like, it's just like, no need, no need. But that was on my own defense. So I did things like that a lot. Now, that was one thing I used to do many times. I, I got so over that. And then another thing was, I remember this one show. This was in Worcester, Mass. I was doing this show, and I feel so bad, man. This lady, she was drunk, like annoyingly drunk, like to the point where, you know, when people are drunk beyond you uh, shutting them down. So, like, when a person's so drunk, they need to be removed. They're drunk beyond the shutdown. You know what I'm saying? Like, because she's yelling shit. She's saying something, and I say something back, but there's nothing you can say to shut someone down who's past the limit. Right. They just have to be taken out because they're going to keep going. Ah, don't say anything to umbrellas. And you're like, what the fuck? Is this? They don't know. They're done. So, you know, you shouldn't have been born. Umbrellas. You're like, all right. Okay. So there's this lady and she's like drunk, but she's being, this is was, was one of my first friendly heckles. And she was like, you know, I was saying something and she was like, whoa, hell yeah, hell yeah. Oh, that's so true. So true. Right. And I'm doing my bits or whatever, but like, it's bothering me. It's like really bothering me. Yeah. Cause I don't know. I don't know what to do. I feel like, I feel like she's fucking with me, but she's not, she's really just like, whoa, hell yeah. Oh man. That's funny. Yes. She's just agreeing, like very encouraging, but over encouragingly. And her voice was like, yes, yes, yes. And I just was like, and she was like, and then at one point she was like, get it done. Right. And this is when um, Larry, the cable guy was big, you know, to get her done. And at his shows, they all yell, get her done. So she was yelling, get her done. Like after punchlines, she was like, get her done. Woo. Right. And people are laughing. Oh my God. Right. And this is what she's doing. And I was like, and then at one point I was like, hey, man, I said, hey, man, shut the fuck up. I just went off. I was like, you come in, fucking get it done. This ain't no fucking Larry, the cable. Get the fuck. I can't stand this shit. Get it done. I started making fun of her and shit. The lady, I, I I kept going, man. The lady got up, man. She was crying and shit. Like, she started crying, but, like, it was like she was drunk crying. It wasn't like, I never said anything, like, um, over the top to her, but I was using language. Like, shut the fuck up. This isn't a Larry the Cable Guy show, man. Get out of here with that shit. Like, you know, like that. I wasn't like, you stupid bitch. Like, I didn't go off right. like that. And so her and a couple people she was with she was like oh wow that's fucked up she was like i was i was enjoying you like that's fucked up and right so she's i'm like oh shit like so i'm on stage i'm like yeah get her done get her out i'm still going and shit because i'm like i don't want to lose the crowd i'm like get her out you know and, and just saying stupid shit and then you know, the two guys she was with they all walked out and like later on i just felt bad about that because there was a much a much more secure person, a much more 
less a much less defensive person would have handled her way differently and had a little fun with her i would have talked to the guys that were around her to keep her down like you know don't get get her done every couple minutes don't get it done after everything i say all right don't keep getting it done that way i would have i would have had some fun with it but i was yeah. too green to understand how to manage that moment so it ended up in her being upset and leaving or whatever um but so that i felt bad about that but i mismanaged the shit out of that i didn't have to do it that way you know right, and granted right, she right. was annoying but that wasn't the point the point was someone with a better skill set would have managed that much better and i could i i mean i could manage it very well now but back then absolutely not yeah it's like uh in a fight or you like you, in a movie there's a fight scene like you know you start they start really pounding the guy and everyone's like yeah yeah and then they're like all right pull him off pull him off you know <laughs> like, he's just keep going he's like someone throw the towel you know yeah. <laughs> and now it's just uncomfortable yeah yeah and you and that's the thing you you as a comic in that situation i i have felt that before this sort of like I have to be overly aggressive with this audience member because I have to gain control of the room. But well, it's really okay. But it's almost like you black out, or like it, in an instant, it's happened, and you're like, "Ah, oh, geez, you know, like I didn't, you know, I can't believe I let myself get that worked up about it, you know." Yeah. And yeah. it's really hard to put the pieces back together of a show after something like that has happened, you yeah. know. It's there's a hyper there's a there's a hyper charged energy that you're feeling it, it, it's almost like when a mob of people get together and one person's leading them if people are like go on and do it harry do it you're like fuck all right i'll do it harry might not be that type of dude to do whatever that mob is telling him to do but it's like the supercharged momentum of that and so when you're in front of a crowd and you're feeling that energy and then you're you're feeling those faces looking at you and and you have to you, it takes a while to learn how to manage that like expectation that their eyes are feeding you you have to yeah. learn how to manage that shit you know it's like if you don't you would be stupid you think you're doing where everybody wants you to do or you're you, or you know what i mean it, it's weird like it takes a while to, to buck against the grain and be like i don't care this time's out people people like get or say something to her fuck her up you know what I mean? Fuck them up. Say something to them. Like, no, man, no, the person's having a good time, man. Shut up. You know, but like, it takes comfort to get to a point to say that to someone, you know? Like, I, right. I actually, you know, I, uh, many times what people will say when they leave my show is they'll say, wow, those people that were talking, you handled that real well. Like, I I, I didn't know what was going to happen with that. Many times they say, you'll say, oh, you, you handled that really well. Because for the most part, if someone's not being an asshole, I'm not, I'm not looking to go into this asshole confrontation for no reason. People are all out to have a good time. Mm -hmm. If it turns into that, it turns into that. But I'm trying by all costs not to because that's no fun to to heat it up to that degree. Now, the banter back and forth, that's some fun shit. Like if, it, if it's boom, 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 you guys are going back and forth, that's cool. But the, the like, when it's legit, serious, or someone's too drunk and it's just like, you know, I don't like, I don't, I'm not a mean, person by nature like when i get that angry i'm ready to do something about it so usually anything i'm saying is very fun like i'm i'm, I'm we're playing for real like it's right. almost like when you play fight with somebody you like or when you're fighting with somebody you like you don't hit them in the face in the face is like oh oh we're fighting for real like you yeah, know what right. i mean but like body shots and arms and that's all like ah, oh, we're friends oh your friend hits you in the chest or something your friend would just punch you in the lip though you'd be like the fuck are you doing you know but yeah. like your arms fair game you know what i mean so it's kind of right. like that i don't i won't hit him in the face you know? yeah yeah and it's it's you could see almost that uh like that lady it's like she's like i trusted you you know yeah. like i thought we were gonna be okay you know yeah. oh god what uh what do you think the worst bomb for whatever reason it could be bad audience bad show bad setup bad mood whatever it is worst bomb that you've had to experience is just start to finish you're like this is this is bad nothing is good about this and get me out of here so um colin i'll be honest man i i i have some bad situations i don't have many like just crickety 
crickety out moments that are just like they're just sitting there looking at me the whole time like shit i mean i have a couple of redeeming qualities for the most yeah. part i don't right. have many i'm not ashamed to say if i did i don't have many of those but i'll tell you some that impacted me yeah that kind of were hurtful yeah so years ago i did um i was doing the boston comedy festival and in the boston comedy festival a lot of your friends take a uh they'll they'll have like uh they do um like march madness what is the they do brackets brackets, so they'll do yeah. brackets your friends like and so it's like a bunch of your friends and they're doing brackets and stuff like this and so i remember, I remember there was a few comics <laughs> a few comics right that have been doing it longer than me i was in the festival this this one i've been in a few years but i was in this one year and a few of the comics were like yo man we got you going all the way, see, Rob. We got you winning this fucking thing. I was like, yeah, yeah, cool, cool, cool. Meanwhile, let's put so much pressure in your fucking head, but whatever. I was just like, yeah, yeah, whatever, man, whatever. I act like I don't, you act like you don't care about it, but in your head, you're like, oh, shit. You're like, you got me with it. Put, put the fucking pressure on me. I look at right. three three or four different people's sheets. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I see C-Rod going all the way, all the way. They got these fucking brackets, right? I'm like, I wish I didn't look at this. So I get in. I go do a show, and at the time, the Celtics had, uh, we had Shaq, we had Ray Allen, we had, um, we had, I think we had, did we have Gary Payton at the same time as Shaq? I can't remember, but it was like, it was like a, it was like an old, we had either Sam Cassell or Gary Payton, whatever, we had like an older lineup, but Shaq was on the team. And so I used to do this joke, and the Celtics were doing pretty good, but I was like, I used to do this joke where I was like, man... I said the Celtics. I was like the Celtics to something. I was like the Celtics is like fucking. You know, you see their 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 their, their big three is like, you know, you see them running up the court and you got Denzel throwing it back to to Morgan Freeman throwing it over to Danny Glover or some shit like that, right? So like I had said this a few times and the joke was worked out better the way I said it. I was like, give me the ball, Morgan, right? So I'm saying all this <laughs> shit and it was like it was like funny, the way I had done it a few times. But I get up on the stage at the thing, at the comedy festival, and I start going into the joke. And I'm like, man, the Celtics is like having Morgan Freeman, Danny Glover, and, and, and uh, you know, whatever. Morgan Freeman, Danny Glover, and Denzel Watch, whatever I say, right? So I say the joke, and it's like, it's like nothing. It's like, huh, <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, oh, oh, shit, I'm in a festival right now, right? So now I start going, and as I'm talking, I start going a little bit faster and uh, which, you know, my cadence and everything just started picking up. I'm like, yeah, so I'm going through the fucking jokes now. And I'm like, oh my God, not getting anything still. Mouth starting to get a little dry and shit. I'm like, oh, this is crazy. So I'm going through and I'm saying, and, 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 and I'm, I'm going through the jokes and nothing's really catching. Finally, I get a little giggle at one point, you know, and I'm doing a five minute set. This is, you know, two and a half minutes in that I get a giggle. You know, I was getting like, <laughs> like a couple people in a room full of 150 people. <laughs> you know, those little pitiful. <laughs> yeah. And then other people just looking at you like, is that all you got? Is, you gonna, is there going to be more? Is there going to be more? Like that, is there going to be more face? Is there going to be more? Is there, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> right. These faces. So it's, it's, I'm getting annoyed. I'm getting dry mouth. I'm thinking about them. Like I got you going all the way. See, right. I'm thinking about that shit, everything as I'm doing these jokes. And I was going fast, I was going fast. And then, like I said, I I, I got into rhythm way late because I got rattled by the first joke. I got into rhythm pretty late. And as I got into the rhythm, people started laughing and I ended pretty good. When I got done, when I got done, my boy, my boy, I was telling you about before, my boy Orlando was like, yo, I was like, I was like, yo, that was bad, man. He goes, you know, usually your friend, you know, you like, People who aren't your friends will be like, no, no, I was fine. I was like, it was bad, man, huh? He goes, ah, man, he goes, look, man, it wasn't great. He goes, but I think it was bad because one of the judges got up while you were up there and went and got a drink. I was like, God damn, if you're in a competition and the judge gets up, (laughs) if one of the judges gets up during your set and gets a drink, Shit did not go well. He was like, yo, he was like, I was back here dying. He said he got up. He said, he said, I just watched him go to the bar, take his time and get the drink. And then he came back. I was like, oh, fuck. Right. And then, oh and, and, uh, 
and then, and then, and then I see the guys after with the brackets, right? Because, you know, I didn't move on, obviously, that round. I see the guys after with the little brackets. They were like, yo, man, you fucked my brackets up. <laughs> I got guys mad at me for messing up their picks. Man, see, Rod, you fucked my bracket up. So, like, it was, it was, like, funny to me that all of the different elements of what happened, but it only became much funnier because it was a little hurtful at the time. Right. It became very funny to me over over the years. You know what I'm saying? But in the moment, it was kind of after the thing. I was like, ah, man, I should have won this fucking thing. And it just was a little annoying. You know, it, it felt it felt it didn't feel great. It didn't feel right. Great. But like I said, after the fact, whatever, it became it became kind of kind of funny. You know what I mean? It became very funny, actually. You know? Yeah. So, I mean, the the. The fun, some of the funny shit in the world to me is is the judge getting up and, and going like he tapped out on my set completely. So right, yeah, yeah. It's it's so funny. Like <clears throat> time really is is the only thing that you can have to to make that sting go away. And wherever you're at in your career, the show that you're on is is the biggest thing because it's what you're doing right then so right. when it doesn't go well you're like the biggest thing just didn't go well right and you think oh this is they're gonna you know all these comics saw me these judges saw me but then you you look back and you go well that was that's i don't even think about that you know it's yeah. it's it's a story i tell to for fun you know it's the only thing you just have to just say all right I, I hate this right now, but in six weeks, I'm going to be telling this story to another comic and a bar show or an open mic. And they're going to be like, they got up, you know, it's yeah. going to be, you know, it'll be killing. I mean, the, um, key, the key to that is to keep going. That's the right. key. If right. you stop and that's the pinnacle and you got all fucked up, then that's that. But if you keep going and you're getting better and you're doing what you got to do and you're trying to correct it and all that, then cool. But some people get, 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 they get, they get flustered, man. They get, they get, that happens to them is they're done, you right. know? So it was like the key is to, to keep, to keep it moving. So I don't know that, like I said, that, that didn't feel good at the time, but was hilarious soon after because there were other things going on. But yeah, like one big point that you said is that, you know, when you get egg on your face in front of your, in front of your peers, you know, your working peers, that's when you feel the shittiest, more than the crowd. The crowd, you're like, whatever. But when everybody's there, there's way more pressure on you in a situation where you got all the people, like the comics watching you than than the people. Way more pressure on you because you, you feel like you're, in, you know, I would imagine it's like that for anybody at any job. Like you gotta almost, you have to, take that shit out of your mind and just do what you're going to do and not focus on any of them. They don't matter at the end of the day, but they do. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yes, they do. Yeah. You know they do I mean? because they're right there. Yeah. Right and there. You have to see and, them. Yeah. And what people, I think this one other thing is like, it's almost like if, if, if there was a, a surgeon and it was all of his colleagues there, all these other surgeons were watching him do a surgery and they were like, I don't know, I'm thinking of Grey's Anatomy. They're all up in this pit up top looking down and you're doing a surgery. Well, the thing is, you can be really good at what you're doing and you're doing a surgery. Unless you're like, su like now if you're a superstar at what you do, it's almost like, well, this is what I do, baby. I'm a superstar. Every day I walk, this is how I move. But when you're like below superstar, when you're just star, <laughs> all right? When you're star and below, like when you're rookie to star, like it, man, yeah. that shit is, is, is unbelievable because the reason I think it makes you feel so crazy is because you know those people are going to be talking about you and you want them to be talking about you positively as opposed to negatively. You know they're all up there like, oh, that's look at that shitty move. That's a, Why would he cut that right there? Why would he do that? That's such a bad incision to make right there. Like, why would you right. Why would you start on that one, right? You, you don't have the confidence yet to be in there just like, this is how I wheel and deal. It doesn't matter what they say because you know what the fuck you're doing. When you're that good, when you're superstar level, you don't care about that. But when you're anything under that, you're like, ah, oh, you're making the incision. You know they're just looking at you like, why would you use that blade? Why is he using that blade to do this? Is fuck? This is horrible. It's such a rookie, fucking mistake. And then you know, you in your own brain, you know that they're gonna be having conversations about you while they're having lunch later and shit. Like, he's, right? How did he even get in the program? Like, he's not good. 
don't yeah. even understand. They just accept it. Where did he go to college? They accept anybody in this fight. You know, like, you know all of that shit. That's the shit that puts the pressure on you from your colleagues watching you. Right. You know? Yeah. And then they see you and they're like, good surgery. Good surgery. Yeah. yeah. Good surgery. <laughs> It was good, yeah. Man, yeah, we'll see it. The, we'll see it the late one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And the one who says good surgery he wasn't even in there watching. Good yeah. Surgery. Good like, surgery. Really liked your stuff. Yeah, it was really good. Let me know if you ever need someone to help yeah. you. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> how did you get that surgery? How did, yeah, how did you exactly. get that? You, you... <laughs> do you have Do you have the hospital's email? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh my God. Um, before we get out of here, I want to, I love to ask comics this question. My favorite question. What is the thing that you like to do after a bad show, weird crowd, whatever it is, just doesn't go right. This sort of picks you up or, or takes you out of that moment. Is there a food or a, or a movie or a song or a person that you reach out to that you go, all right, I have to do this thing so I can come back from this. Yes. So I'll call Orlando. I call my boy Orlando Baxter. We talk about it. If I can't get him on the phone, it's it's very um, it's it's annoying because he's one of the only ones who understands. Because like I was saying about having a comedy buddy before, like I'm talking about one who really like you really like know each other and vibe with each other because you can have a lot of comedy friends, but many of your comedy friends don't hold the capacity to like talk you off a ledge unless they're on the same exact level as you or higher. Right. If they're not doing the same things, they're annoyed that you're complaining about a gig that you had that they wish they had. So their, yes. their responses to you are not very helpful. So you can't call everybody and be like, ah, oh, I just fucking finished doing that gig. And then and they're like, oh man, it's all right, man. We got another one tomorrow. You'll be fine. And you're like, all right, man, I'll talk to you later. Like they can't yeah. do, you can't process it with them the right way. Um, and if their comedy intelligence isn't there yet, you can't process it with them the way you want to. So being able to call him or there's a couple of people I could call, but being able to call him is like, we just talk it down. Like I did last night. You know what I mean? We get on the phone, we laugh about it. It's like, what happened? Ooh, I ate, I ate that shit last night, boy. You know, and then you go from there and, and you talk about it because he's the same person. And again, any comedian who hears this, you got to have somebody who, who actually, you got you you grow so fast in comedy if you have somebody who actually like who you feel like is in your corner mm -hmm. because then when you go to shows even if you're going to try let's say you're like oh I'm going to try all this new shit or whatever right if you go to a show and you don't feel like any level of support or any kind of whatever sometimes it's harder to do these things that you want to do but when you show up with somebody who has your back you'll stick to your guns more, even if the person in front of you kills. So right. specifically, let's say you show up to a, a mic or you show up somewhere, you're like, I got to run this new shit. Now, it takes a special kind of comedian to be like, I don't care what happens, I'm doing it, right? Because the person in front of you could go up and murder. And let's just say it's a show, it's a mic or it's a produced show. Let's say it's, it's, a little, it's a step up from just a mic. And so you're like, I got all this new shit I need to try for the weekend. You know, I need to get this shit right. Now, if the person go in front of you kills, your ego steps in and your ego is like, well, I may have to fucking do some of my old shit here. But if you have somebody with you who you've already told, yo, I'm going to do this new shit no matter what. It might bomb if it fucking, if, if, if the room's not right, it might not go well. And you know you got one ally in the room. It doesn't, all of a sudden, you do whatever the fuck you were going to do. You'll just go in and do that material because you know somebody in here knows that like I planned on doing this like this and I tried it and you heard it and we're on the same page as opposed to if you go in there alone again it's that whole surgeons watching the surgeon work type thing and then it becomes right. different you know so it takes a stronger mind to still go do it anyways if any of this is making sense is that making sense what i'm saying to you? that makes a ton of sense yeah. yeah where you need to have somebody that one speaks your language you know because it's such a unique language and two has been in the same situation because you talk to some people and like you said if you talk to people that are younger in comedy 
they're like, well, that's great. You're on the road. You're in a hotel. That's so cool. It's like, I'm in a hotel and I'm thinking about throwing myself from a window. You know, it's like, how great is that? You know, you have to talk to somebody that's like, I, I've been in that club. I've done that. The late show, horrible there. The booker's insane. Did they charge you for drinks? I knew they would. You yeah. need that. You need yeah. that. Because and you can't call family, you know, you can't call friends that aren't comics because they're like, Why are you upset? Yeah, you know, yeah. you usually do, you usually kill it. You're like, No, yeah, bro, yeah. I'm saying right now it didn't go well. Ah, oh, man, you get it, man. You always come through. You're like, All right, man, let me talk to you a little later because you, right. you're not giving me anything I fucking need right now. Yeah, but yeah. The one other thing about the comedy buddy thing I'll say is uh, having a good comedy friend is like someone, like you said, that speaks your language. And when I say that, what I mean by that is like some comics try to tell you what they would say that's funny for you. They'll be like, hey, man, you should tag that up. This is what you should say. Right. Rarely does that work. Mm -hmm. When you have somebody who actually can speak you and they're like, yo, based on the way that you say shit, this works well with what you do. That's the type of person you want to fuck with. Right. You don't want someone who's like, no, you should put, you should say uh, you kill a dead stripper at the end of it. It's like, I don't talk about that shit. That's not, that doesn't work here for me. I'm not, I'm not shocking people in that sense. Like you're, you're talking about something totally different, you know? And they're just right. like, oh, but it would be funny to say that and be like, you know, whatever. So just that, that's the biggest thing that's so helpful. Someone who actually can speak through you that knows, like knows your vibe. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. They, they can really give you a, a sense because it's so hard when you're inside yourself, you're inside your head to give yourself the right advice. You know, they, they know exactly how to communicate what you need, you know, and what, what can help you at that moment. And, right. uh, and you could do it for them too. It, it's, it's usually a two way street where it's like the thing that you're thinking, the thing that you know is right. It's so hard to convince yourself. And then somebody comes over and he goes, why would you think that? Why would just do this, this? And you're like, oh, yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, it's so obvious. But right. but you need those people to, like you said, pull you off the ledge to go. Come on. You know, you know what else are you going to do? You can't quit. Obviously, you're not going to quit. You have no other skills. Get over here. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Oh, man. <clears throat> Dude, I, um, I, I, I think, look, I'll say one more thing. I'll say one more thing. I, I think. I just want to put this out there too because we all get this like we all get this stigma like like that's how we all are like oh you know we're like we're ready to fucking give it up in bad situations and stuff and we're like we're all fucked and all this other stuff i just i don't subscribe to some of that stuff some right. of it i just don't it's like man th we get paid to make people laugh man this shit is dope you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Once you realize that, it's like, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't enjoy having a bad set. I don't like it at all. Cause I, cause I, cause I have a standard, but I never feel like that shit. Fuck it. You know what I mean? It's over. You know, like I never, I never feel like that. And I feel bad when people do, you know what I mean? Like I feel yeah. really bad. And, and I, and I also say like, just for comedians, like I don't, I don't subscribe to like, we're all, all fucked up. We're no more fucked up than any other population of people. Right. We're no, I don't believe it. People think that we like walk with comedians are really sad clowns and they got all this shit. No, there are some who are super depressed, super anxious, super uh, 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 schizo and, 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 and uh, bipolar and everything else, right? But so are a, a bunch of fucking garbage men and a bunch of nurses and a bunch of teachers. You think all your te none of your teachers take medication? You think none of your <laughs> you think none of your carpet cleaners? You think none of your Kirby sellers fucking take medication? You think yeah. you, you know what I'm saying? It's like the world. Do you think none of your pilots? You think all the pilots are fine? You know? Think all your police officers are good to go? None of them have anxiety. Get the fuck <laughs> out of here. So it's like. When I hear people say that about comedians, it, it, it's funny to me. It's almost, to me, I look at it like, almost like a superpower. We have we have all the same shit that the rest of the world has, but we have the ability to, to still poke fun at that and bring humor to people, you know, and allow people to have all these fucking laughs on a grand stage. That's awesome. As opposed to people being like, oh, that dude's really fucked up inside. He lost his mom. Did you lose your mom, motherfucker?
Yeah, right. Yeah. Like, what do you mean? What do you think? Like, how do I don't understand why? And I don't like when comedians just keep like pushing that on. Like, oh, we really are fucked up. We're really fucked. You're no more fucked up than your than your fucking pharmacist that you went to go see. You're no more fucked up than them. Right, uh, right. And that's why I think that's a great point. And and to be said, that's why we're able to connect with an audience because if we were so beyond help they wouldn't be able to relate with us right. you know they'd be like right. well this is this is just crazy this is sad you know but no like i'm overweight or you're overweight oh wow we're both overweight you know it's not right. like i'm not morbidly obese i'm not i'm not going to die on stage you know it's like we oh my my mom's she guilts me your mom guilty you know my, i'm not saying right. She's, right. you know, uh, you know, like Norman Bates here. It's like this is just normal stuff that we have to share. You That's know, right. That's mm. right. We found a way to make that shit funny. Right. We found yeah. a way to connect with you to make it funny. We're all in here laughing about this shit. You know what I mean? You should be, you know, like, so I don't know. I just, I just, I don't love everybody can say what they want, but I don't, I don't love the comedians keep pushing that narrative. Like, oh man, we all have such fucked up backgrounds that if you keep asking somebody enough stuff, eventually you'll find something fucked up. But that's most people that have been right. on the planet long enough, right? Yeah. If they've been here long enough, you'd be like, oh, so there's nothing wrong with you? No, did you lose anybody? Yeah, see, see, see. So you're like, all right, man, well, who didn't right. lose somebody at some point in their life? You know, did you, no tragedy? Did you have any childhood friends die? See, that can fuck you up, that can fuck you up. It's like they're yeah. looking for something. Did you have an alcoholic dad? See, 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 see. Was you? Did your mom? You know they're looking, but it's like poll people. Take ten people that are non comedians in the room and ask them all those same questions, and they'll be like, "Right, exactly, <laughs> yeah." They just don't get to talk about it. You right. can't, you can't, you can't talk about this at, at, at H and R Block if you work there. You know, <laughs> we we have to talk about it. You know. Right. You wouldn't go. You wouldn't do your banking there if if every day you came in and so was like, man, my dad used to really wail on me. It was crazy. Like you'd be like, all right, I gotta, I gotta open a different account. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, dude, exactly. this is this is this is so fun. Uh, I I really cannot thank you enough for doing this. I I love this this kind of stuff. Um. Uh, please tell people where they can find you, where they can see you, where they can hear you. Where are you going to be? Yeah, you guys can find me on uh, on Instagram at Corey Rods, C O R E Y R O D S, and on Facebook is uh, Corey Rodriguez and uh, Corey with the E, Rodriguez with the S. And also on my, just go to my website. You'll find all the dates there, CoreyRodriguez.com, Corey with the E, Rodriguez with the S. This deck, when when will this when will this drop, Colin? Probably in the next two to three weeks. Two to three weeks? Okay. So, yeah, you guys go there and check out the calendar. Uh, if, if this goes out to people, when you see this in Boston, I'll be at the um, – I'll be at Laugh Boston on, Jan on June 19th and 20th or June 18th and 19th, whatever that weekend is there. Let me pull up the calendar here. Let's oh, yeah, that's the 18th and 19th. I think. Yeah, June 18th and 19th, I'll be there. Uh, yeah, so – Check out the count. There's a ton of dates. I'm not going to go through the whole list of dates. You guys want to see me, make sure you go to CoreyRodriguez.com. And uh, I look forward to seeing you at a show. Right on. Well, thank you very much for doing this, man. I had a great time. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it.